Mr. Mr. Bathory? Is yeah, that the correct way to say it? I be that the Mr. But yeah, just just. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Bandit. Welcome to Stockholm, sunny Sweden. What are you What are your feelings spontaneously? Is it better than Gothenburg last night? Well, so sunny Sweden. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it, well, we, we're gonna put it to a test because it was a really good show last night. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what you guys can yeah. do because see what it's, happens. A, it's a competition now. So um, let me start off by like addressing the big elephant in the room. How's Ivan? <laughs> oh, I thought he's gonna call me an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I went to the gym this morning. <laughs> so, Ivan is doing really, really well. It's actually I'm really happy to see him to you know to recover and. Probably the best he's been the last ten years. That sounds good. So if you guys coming to the show, you'll you'll see. It's I'm I'm really impressed actually. That's good. Yeah. Uh, you've been out with In Flames. Have they taught you any Swedish words backstage? Uh, not yet. No. Not yet. Well, we had only a couple of shows yeah, so yeah, far. Yeah. So you is know, there anything you we want? didn't we didn't get to the the, the words yet? All right. You know. Is there anything you would like to know how to say? Uh yeah. Thank you. How goes? How does it? Tuck. Tuck. Yeah. Easy as that. So I guess you guys say thank you a lot because there's tuck, tuck, tuck. tuck. Yeah, we usually add tuck on fun, uh -huh. which is thank you in a small explicit word. So tuck on fun. Tuck on fun. That's tuck good. Some fun. So okay. that's what you say between the songs tonight. Right. Tuck on fun. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. So uh, hey, um, I could ask you questions, but these guys probably can too. I hope. Swedes are a little bit shy, but uh, let's see if there are any questions. Raise your hand if you have a question. You'll get a mic, and we'll see. We do have people on the internet uh, looking at this too, and they can uh, also <laughs> write in questions. Uh, all right. Hey, man, what's your name? Annika. Hello. Hello. What can you tell us about the new record? The new record, okay. So, you know, we are Five Finger Death Punch, so it's going to sound like Five Finger Death Punch, but <laughs> no no jazz fusion, none of that, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a really good record. I think it's one of our best, if not the best. Um, at this point, you know, we're keeping our sound, but it's about songwriting and getting better and better songs. And I think the new, new record actually coming out in April, May. Before that, we have our greatest hits that are coming out this December. The greatest hits has two new songs. And uh, record has probably about twelve, and a few bonus tracks on the you know on the deluxe edition. But really proud of it. It's uh, probably the couple of I would say maybe two or three of the best songs we ever wrote written is on this new record. Sounds good. Anything else you can tell us who produced? Uh, Kevin Churko. You know, okay, he's, Churko. he's sort of yeah. like a you know sixth band member at this point. Yes. You know, he's he's you know he understands the band and 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 he can really. You're kind of crazy a little bit, especially Ivan. <laughs> and no. uh, you know, we, yeah, wouldn't wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't believe, right? Yeah. So so he he has a a, a manner and a, a way of working with the band that he doesn't really want to change who we are. He doesn't, you know, he he sort of gets the best of us instead of steering, you know, the, the boat. That's good. That's yeah. good. Any more questions from the crowd? Over here, green hair. Come here, Mick. There, where should go? Hey, dude. <laughs> so, Hello, dude. Uh, uh, what's your name? Stella. Stella. Hi, Stella. I saw a picture on Instagram last night. Uh -huh. uh, it was two girls in a hot tub, and they had fur hats. Okay. And you said on the comments that the hats were not real fur, uh -huh. that it were fake. Yeah. So I wonder, are you against the fur industry? Um, well, your your wife is vegan, right? <laughs> yes, she is vegan. Yeah. <laughs> is she vegan? <laughs> yes, she is. You too. Uh huh. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm vegan too. All right. So then you know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Next question over here. Hello? Uh, see ya. Hello. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hungarian. All right. Um, so what's your inspiration when you write your songs? Uh, well, when, you know, it, when, we, when we write songs, it's um, everybody's inspiration different. I personally, I can talk about my personal inspiration. I, when I write a song, I sort of see a movie in my head that I write a soundtrack to, you know. I sort of came from, come from the, you know how classical song, songwriters back in a, in a time, they would write songs without a vocalist. And the song itself had to tell you a story. So the idea is that with music alone, without, without even a vocalist giving you words, 
you should be able to feel what this song means, you know? Yes. So, so it's basically a song has to tell you um, a story or at least give you a mood. For example, if you, if you listen to um, a horror movie soundtrack, right? Without seeing the picture, you know that it's a horror movie soundtrack. So I think good songwriters start with that. I paint a picture before even I said a word. And now, once I painted this picture, if my vocalist understands that picture and writes something that matches that, then you then I really give you a feeling, I really give you a, a world. So basically that's that's how you know we write the songs. Thank you. Cool. Any more questions from the crowd over here? Fuck you, you fucking fuck. That's what right. it says Beautiful. on his shirt. <coughs> Beautiful just, shirt. Just saying. Nice Hi. Right. Hi, what's yeah. your name? I'm Sebastian. Uh, Hi, Sebastian. Uh, your latest album have, uh, have been on hold for, for a while mm -hmm. now. And uh, my question is, uh, do you have new material that you wrote uh, f that is coming out uh, soon? Or mm -hmm. um, because um, you've been waiting f to release your album. For yeah, for it's been finished uh -huh. for quite a while. So, right? yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so have so you new material? You have been... Can we expect more from you soon? Uh, yes. So basically, you know, we had a little bit of a wrestling match with our record label. And um, we settled that issue. And uh, we had a record that we recorded maybe a year ago. Yeah. So, I mean, I would, to be completely correct, we finished it a year ago, last December, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And, you know, like we had the little, you know, as I said, a wrestling match and a legal one. Yeah. And um, so basically, but now it's, it's settled. And, and what it means to us that we're putting out this greatest hits record and the record that we recorded then, we, since that we recorded a couple of new songs, so that's going to be added to that. But it's all new material that you guys obviously didn't hear before. So because the greatest hits also have two songs, we have about in the next six, seven months, you guys are going to hear about 17, 18 songs that are coming out between all the records. Yeah. yeah? And they're all new. Okay. Uh, all right. Any more questions? Do we have anything from the internets? <laughs> the internet we, we are live streaming this. I think... Uh, um, Bolnas Martin, hello? Hello. What does the internet wonder? The www. I have some questions actually. Uh, one guy called Michael wonders uh, how politically involved are you? Quite a lot, I guess. Yes. But you can tell them. <laughs> so you know, especially I'm being in the US, U.S. today. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a self uh, self appointed uh, armchair politician, so to speak. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I watch I watch politics since I was a kid. It was, uh, you know, I grew up in a communist country, so so to me it was natural that you know we would be watching TV and getting the propaganda and I would have to read between you know the lines and I mean I remember I was like seven years old or something and and watching TV and the Americans have her, it was a transportation industry had a big strike right and so the communist propaganda was coming to us and you know like look the bourgeois is going down in flames you know the people risen up and you know american the, imperialists yeah the american yes. imperialists are coming to the yeah. end and you know and and the people are striking and i'm like seven years old living in a communist country I'm like dad they can go out on the street and strike yeah. you know so i saw always you know in between the lines that you know we couldn't go out on the street and strike so it, it, to me it's always was interesting to you know sort of watch what's happening and really kind of figure out like what actually happening so i'm not a conspiracy theorist but but i watch you know i watch what you know with with the and I cautious actually, eyes yes and, and i write for a magazine it's called a skill set magazine and i'm the i'm their political commentator so actually i can say i'm professionally involved in that i have uh three four pages in every magazine wow. it's a nationally distributed magazine in america mm -hmm. cool and even lynn asks uh do you write songs Political songs, because I was thinking you, you said uh -huh. that you you it's like a movie for you before yeah. you. Yeah, um, you know lyrically, you, lyrically obviously Ivan writes most of the lyrics, and and there are some, you know, there are some some political stuff, but not too much, you know. It's he, which I really appreciate. Most of his lyrics are coming from life that he experiences, so we don't write about I don't know dragons and whatever the hell, <laughs> you know. Which is, you know, cool, but it's just not for us, you know. And, dragons and are cool, yes. Dragons are cool, but, yeah. you know, it's just, they just don't exist. But, you know, <laughs> otherwise then they're cool, but 
when you when you write songs about real life and you know and and situations that happen to you then then people can relate you know and if if you write about mythology or or history which is cool and a lot of bands do that you know then i feel like okay well it's cool it's a cool song and i got an education about whatever but that's not necessarily why people go to you know concerts or listening to music so you know but everybody you know each to their own so for us we we write about real life and and experiences that we have and some of this is political but not you know we're not really taking it to you know to all the way not just because anything else or yes. should we check uh, the card out? two more shorties patrick uh, wonders if you prefer uh, festival gigs or or indoor venues oh. and uh, one girl uh, emily wonders w when will you be back in sweden again two questions isn't that always the case? You come here and people be like, <laughs> when, will you be when are you coming back? And you know, well, and I'm here every, now. Every, you know, a funny thing, when we release a new record, next day people ask, like, so when do you have a new record? Yeah. I'm like, I listen to this now. It took me one. 70 minutes. Yeah. When is the next one coming? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So we are in Sweden right now, so <laughs> I don't know when we're going to be back. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe we can step out of the country to Finland and come back one more time, just so we can be back. But, um, uh, for what was the other question? I the other question was festival uh, gigs, festival or gigs or 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 okay. venues. Yes. So that's an interesting question because you know both both situations have its pros and cons. You know, when it's a when it's our own gig, you know everybody, you know all of you guys are our friends. You know the lyrics. You you know this is this is a family. Our fans are pretty much. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, but you know. It's it's a family. It's really it's pretty amazing. The first row I'm looking around, there are fla Iranian flags, Russian flags, Swedish flags, German flags. Like they come from all the way, from all the countries, and they always there. It's pretty amazing. And um, so that's you know when so you have your own gigs, it has that feeling that these are our people. This is this is the family. When it's a when it's a, a festival gig, then we always have this feeling of like we're gonna show. You know what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there are fans that, or there are people who who may never heard of us, and and we have that. The, the ones in the back going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, and 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 yeah. precisely, and yeah. we we always have that little bit of a fire of like, okay, we're gonna. The armchair rock stars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those those guys, and you know, yeah. we, we have that feeling. Well, we're gonna show you what's up. You know. Cool. <laughs> And more questions from the crowd over here. Hello, what's your name? Rita. Hi. Hi, Rita. Hi. Uh, I have a question about the obviously military influence on some mm -hmm. of your songs. Can you tell us more? Military. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I personally grew up in a military base. I was born in a military base, and 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 most of the people around me in my life was military and actually it's the same today most of my friends are you know actually police officers and and you know and and uh, the people i employ my my assistants everybody is actually veterans um various reasons a that i can you know i know what to expect from them they don't take a step back they always you know figure out the way you know it's embedded in them they're, they're sort of warriors right and second you know i I want to help them. You know, I give them a job because because they do a job that none of us want to do. Um, we could, you know, we could uh, imagine this utopistic world where everybody's at peace and we don't need an army, but that's not reality. And so, if we accept reality, and then you need these guys. And if you need these guys, then it's a job that none of us really wants to do. None of us go to work thinking like this is maybe the last day, you know, and they do. So. I have to appreciate and recognize that. And the kind of people they, most of them at least, are. You know, it's very, there is a mentality that, you know, that, that I also have because I grew up with them, that I think helped me to become successful. And that's that, the idea of that I can't take a step back. You know, I have to figure out that next step, what's coming. And, and you know, you just, you just simply don't give up. The, you know, running is not an option. And, and we have a lot of military fans because of what we say and the way we talk about things. Those are the people who will naturally, you know, connect to us. Good answer. You have another question? Is it about right. fur? No, I'm sorry. Did you pass the mic? Is it okay if I take one more question? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. <laughs> uh, hang on. You've done a lot of good collaborations before. Mm -hmm. Are there any more coming up? Um, 
we have since we did a lot of them actually um I, i'm not gonna say never but you know right now on the new record there is nothing nothing really that's it's all us but but um i don't you know i don't close it out it's a possibility all right go ahead why did you become vegan <laughs> back to the fur i just don't like fur <laughs> well you know it's a uh, um for the longest time, I, I didn't really eat red meat, if we want to get into that. Um, I only ate fish. And, um, you know, and eventually, uh, my, my girlfriend is vegan for almost all her life, you know, and she's a great cook. So it's kind of, I can't, couldn't afford, avoid it, you know, because that's what she cooks. And I'm like, man, this is pretty cool. I can't make the difference between her burger and the real one, you know. So naturally i started eat, eat, eat vegan because of that and you know being around her obviously you know she's a you know she's one of those vegans that have passionate reasons she's yeah. a passionate one right and she doesn't even eat honey because she doesn't agree with how it is taken because it's not vegan but she doesn't agree how it's taken from the bees right um and obviously if he, if he you know if he gonna get into um the idea that the biggest polluter is actually cows in the world, you know, and 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 if you want to go scientific about that, you know, people will tell you that, well, you need protein. Well, uh, animals can't create protein. Only you know, only grass and the greens and you know and 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 vegetables can create protein. Animals have protein because they ate those vegetables, yes. or the, the grass, right? So. And my girlfriend is sort of a bodybuilder too, so she can, she can actually prove that you can build muscles. Can she uh, can she wrestle you? Well, she's a jiu jitsu fighter too. Yeah. So yeah, and but you're into the, the Brazilian <laughs> thing. Yeah, she, do yeah, do yeah. you fight? Have you fought her? Yeah. Who won? Well, it's it's kind of like <laughs> she, look, she, did. She's, she always have to win because if if you don't let her win, then you don't win. You know what yeah, I mean? If you win, it's, it's, you still lose. Yeah. I no hear you. Winning, you know, there's yep. no winning that. You. you never fight a girl because there is no way you can win. Because if you win, you beat up a girl. If you lose, you got your ass kicked by a girl. So you can't just don't fight girls. It's very simple. Oh, cool. But yeah, so so, sport, so, um, so I understand course. the health, you know, the health and 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 you know and and basically, you know, and and the idea of the, the spiritual way looking at it that you know those animals are creatures, you know. All right. Any more questions? Anyone over there? The Hungarian girl. Yeah. Do you like potatoes? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, well, let's let's get into the potato. <laughs> yeah, I eat sweet potatoes generally. Yeah. Anyone else? Anything non food? We can talk about spices. Related? Any anyone? Guy, guy over here? Condiments. Yeah. I like uh, ketchup and. Is <laughs> ketchup a sauce? Only organic. Or uh, what is ketchup? No, yeah, you let's know not what? get into yeah, that. Yeah, let's say, right. What's your name? Peter. Hi, Peter. Nice name. Yeah. I like it. Uh, you guys been on tour for like year after year. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when you're not on tour? When I'm not on tour. Oh, like that's uh, that's gonna be a long list. I I race monster trucks. I fight jiu jitsu. I run a couple of different companies. I have you know, have a clothing line. I have a couple of different companies. As I said, um, I paint. I you know I went to school for you know for art. I went to an art college, so I still paint. It's I have a record label. I just I'm building, and I mean I'm keeping myself busy. You know. Yeah. When w <laughs> and, I, I have a and eat vegan food, and <laughs> <laughs> I have a follow up. And, and don't question. wear fur. <laughs> when you when when you don't have anything work related to do, what do you do to well, unwind? So do, you, do you watch sports or TV shows about dragons or no, play no dragons, games no. or? Well, the thing is, I you know I try this idea. You know, everybody uh. has this idea. Like one day, you know, you're gonna make it, and then you're gonna go to an island, and you're gonna lay in a hammock. With a margarita that works for me about for seven minutes before i'm like okay dude, this is this is i i gotta do something you have to create something yeah 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 it's it's kind of the idea that you know again i i came from hungary third world country almost you know at the time especially communist country so so for me to break out of there i knew that i had to be stronger smarter you know than anyone else 
because otherwise I don't have a chance. So pretty much I just read as many books as possible. I educated myself. I learned to play guitar and every any skill that I can possibly learn. And um, then that you become that. And I can't really step away from that anymore. So, so what happens instead of you, you love, you learn to love the journey. You learn to love um, the work. So, so out of a sudden, you know, the accomplishment is not really what makes you happy. It's not that you know I painted the picture and now it's done, so I'm happy. No, it's getting there. And when when you learn that, then you always kind of you know you always you're always in that mode of creating and you're happy because because you're doing something, you're creating something. So that's the trick. More questions? Crickets? Furs? Anything about furs? Anything? You guys are here, you have the chance to talk to this guy. He's really, <laughs> really nice and interesting. We, we have more food questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where's the microphone right now? In the back. Here we go. Are you the only vegan in the band? <laughs> It's killing us. <laughs> okay. Um, y yes, I, I am. Um, the, the other guys are carnivores. Um, I guess that's the. <laughs> I, I see. So you seems like it upset you, but <laughs> well, I'll try to talk to them about it. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll get into the education of. Uh, does that? Uh, uh, what does that do to your like catering backstage? Do you get a separate meal? Yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah. We have chefs, and you know I. Usually the you know we have runners and every city actually it's a, it's quite a you know an undertaking because every city I have to you know check it out if I where is the vegan restaurant and I have some so, tips for you, you know, in the vicinity actually yeah. if you want to and then I we have some. to send or runners or assistant yeah, to, yeah. to get it and when the tour is catered like this one is actually catered then the chef when we hire a chef then you know obviously it's one of the question if they can accommodate that you know and even. Well, we can talk about this if it's, it's interests you. Uh, I I I specific I specify that they can only cook with coconut oil or olive oil. I don't any other oil is not acceptable. Canola oil, for example, you can't uh, process it. It's toxic to your liver, even though everybody using it. Um, it became a food show now, but you yeah. know. welcome to <laughs> Food Finger <laughs> Death Punch. Uh, food, food Finger Death Punch. That's a good one. <laughs> Q and A session. But yeah. So uh, up next, uh, breakfast uh, tips. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you have a specific uh, guitar player that you inspired you? Oh, I, I think right. I know the answer to this. Uh, uh, one of them is Ingve Malmsteen, right? Hundred percent. Right. Yes. 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 Swedish Ingve Malmsteen. Yes. Anyone so, else? Ingve Malmsten. I, you know, I listen to all the all the guitarists, start from the Marty Friedman to Steve White, to Ingve Malmsten, all the all those guys. Um, there was a there was a time, you know, when I was starting to learn guitar, and you know, that's kind of what you look up to as a as a guitar player, right? And then and there comes a time when you know, obviously, nobody can get as good as Ingve Malmsten, so you have to accept that. You're always gonna suck compared to Ingve Malmsteen. That's just everybody in the world have to accept that. But um, you can get there maybe like thirty percent, right? Like everyone else in the world. Better guitar player than Ingve Malmsteen. Actually, actually, absolutely not true. But <laughs> I, I thank you for trying. But let's stay with reality. We don't sing about dragons. We don't, you know, <laughs> we don't do that, you know. But you know, he's 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 beyond everyone out there. It's just what it is. But. There come there came a moment where I, I realized that, however, being a, a shredder, you know, when when you learn how to move your fingers fast enough, it's kind of gets to the point to me at least, and I don't want to insult any guitar players, but it's kind of like how well I can control the meat puppet, if that makes any sense. If you go to the gym and you lift, sooner or later you're gonna get muscles, right? So if I play eight hours a day, I, I'm gonna every day I'm gonna be a good guitarist and single. It's just you know what it is, and um, there came a moment when I realized that there's a difference between having the mechanical skill of being a good instrumentalist or writing a song. It's not the same. It's absolutely not the same. And if you ask somebody like, "Hey, can you write me a song that is really difficult to play?" Um, some time signatures, some shredding. Of course, yeah, of course, I can do that. But write me a song that will be the soundtrack for people's life. 
or write me a song that will touch people and change their mood, it's much harder. It's much, much harder. So I started to actually study bands like the Beatles. You know, they figured out how to write a song a long time ago. And bands that, and, and, and was looking at songs like why, what's, what this particular song has, why this song became a song that everybody in the world knows, you know? And then you start to realize patterns and, and there are certain, how would I, this is a certain energy that you start to look for. And, and that kind of changed my trajectory from trying to be that guy to a songwriter. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? Nothing more from the internet over here? Okay. <laughs> as long as you are, the, the other people not asking questions are good with returning Third questions. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do before you became famous and all this? Trying to get famous. Yeah. <laughs> you played the so, bass, actually, didn't that, you? Well, that, was, that was just... Uh, uh, I, it was something like there was a band that I really liked and they were looking for a bass guitarist and I just jumped in to sort of help out. I was because I can play bass as well, if yeah. I, you know. But but pretty quickly I realized that, you know, I, I, it's, it's not my... That was the first band and the last that I, I didn't start. I'm not really a follower. That just doesn't work out for me. So this was a band that I, I really liked the guys, very good friends, and I actually really liked the band. But but it's their band, you know. This is not something they started. It's their band, and I jumped in, not even on my own instrument, as a bass guitarist, and had, you know, a year of, of, of fun touring with them. But then I realized that you know I, I I need to you know I need to navigate. I, yeah. I I'm not a you know. I back in the <laughs> did you did you play in bands back in Hungary before you moved to to the US? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Was, what was the first band that you had and so, what, what name? So be who I don't think it was probably something extremely stupid. <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. We was it always metal, or did yeah. you start out no, well, by playing I, I, I punk covers? I started punk. Or? Actually, I started yeah. with punk bands. Uh, Don't you always? So, so, so in course. my country, to get a guitar was extremely difficult. I mean, an average person would make I don't know seventy dollars a a month or something like that. So, to get a guitar was was extremely difficult. So, uh, my parents' coffee table suffered this because it became a guitar. Me, the how jigsaw. do you play the guitar on a coffee table? This is how you take a jigsaw, you know, and, <laughs> and, and you just, <laughs> okay. and then you just hit it, you know. And so I made my first guitar out of a coffee table, literally. I had. What a, did you use for strings? So, well, what happened? I found, I found a broken guitar that I could, I took the neck, so the neck was intact, and some of the hardware, the body was broken, and and so I made a guitar. It was wow. a piece of crap, but it was a guitar. It looked very metal, you know. I <laughs> did the shape and everything. It looks Splinters like splinters going out. Yeah, know, it, it was horrible. Like but you know, that was my first guitar. I was 12 years old, you yeah. know, the jigsaw, and um, I was about 16 when I got like an actual guitar, and that was that was usable. And and I was listening to British punk bands at the time, like UK subs, GBH, Cockney Rejects, and all that, you know all these unknown British bands. And from American bands, I listen to Suicidal Tendencies and stuff like that. Yeah, I Mutt love in. Suicidal <laughs> Tendencies, right? So, you know, and then I started with that. And, and then Iron Maiden, when Iron Maiden, I heard the first time, the first recordings from Iron Maiden, I heard with Paul Diano, the original singer. And he was kind of like a punk guy, you know? And, and, and it had that punk vibe. So the reason I switched sort of to metal because I heard that. I'm like, wow, this is like a, a punk band that doesn't suck, you know? <laughs> because, right? Because, well, but because because Diano had this this tonage tonality, like he just sounded like a punk band. But there were two guitarists who could really play. So that's why I'm like, it's like, man, this is like a punk band that actually can play. I, I would agree with you, but don't ever say that to Steve Harris because I I think <laughs> someone has, and he was like, what? <laughs> but I agree. So, yeah. So and and so I I started to listen to Iron Maiden, and that's how I kind of started to see. Oh, there is this whole world of heavy metal. I never, you know, I never heard of, and that's how I, I became like, you know. And then I was playing all kind of bands, and you know, that's just cool. Yeah. Nice. So uh, I think uh, I think we're about done. Actually, I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a good time. Yes. Um, good luck tonight. I mean, this is the first time I could talk about fur. 
Awesome. And, and, and vegan spices, you know. Right. <laughs> you know it, it, it was actually very special because this is something that would never come up in a, ever. So. <laughs> Welcome to Sweden. Um, thank you so much, Zoltan. And uh, good luck tonight. Thank good you. luck on the rest of the tour. Hope to see you back here soon again. Thank right. you. Thank you, guys.